Namaskar and very good morning to all. So today we'll be discussing about nanothin films and their fabrication techniques. So now to begin, what is a nanothin film? As the name suggests, a film that having the thickness in the range of nanometers is called a nanothin film. Nanothin films are being categorized into two categories. First is as thin film and second as thick films. Now the difference between thin and thick films depend upon the deposition techniques rather than the film thicknesses. So when we call a film as a thin film, it has a low dimensional material created by condensing or one by one atomic or molecular species deposition. Rather, thick films are low dimensional materials which are created by thinning a 3D material or by dispersion or using a paste method directly onto the substrate or a platform where the thin film is coated. So we cannot classify nanothin films on the basis of their thicknesses. Now, the, as the technology is evolving and we are moving from bulk to thin films, we are reducing down the thickness of bulk, but the thin films are essential for the miniaturization of our devices. And these thin films have the similar feature as that of bulk material. So why we require thin films? Basically, thin films provide this high surface to volume ratio. They have very fine geometrical control. We can confine thin films into two dimensional and they are compatible with microelectronic devices and they have similar characters as the single crystal. Now, we generally classify our thin films in these categories. First is amorphous, second is polycrystalline, third is epitexture and fourth is single crystal. Now, what is the difference between all these thin? The thin film which is having a similar behavior as that of amorphous like a glass or a quartz, these films are called amorphous thin films. Second is polycrystalline. If we see the XRD of any polycrystalline thin films, it shows multiple peaks. That means different types of grains are oriented in different direction of your axis. And third is the epitexture. That means if your platform or which is called a substrate is having the same orientation as that of your thin film, it shows the epitexture matching and the films can be oriented in particular direction or a plane. Those films are known as epitexture films. And then the single crystal films, single crystalline films have the same behavior as that of the single crystal and they are oriented in only one direction. So the grains in the single crystalline thin film are oriented in only one direction. Now the application of thin films comes under microelectronic devices. Nowadays we are using smartphones. So these smartphones are again based on the microelectronic devices and these microelectronic devices are fabricated using again thin films. Then these thin films are used for telecommunication devices. So microphone is again your telecommunication device. Then we have some wear resistant coatings. We can use them for decorative coatings. Nowadays you will see there are various types of artificial ornaments are coming up like gold coated, platinum coated. So all these are basically made up of non-precious metals, but they are coated with precious metals like gold, platinum, rhodium. So they make a decorative coating. Then we have optical coating also like windows, solar cells and in various type of sensors like gas sensors, biosensors, all these are dependent upon the thin film and their properties and again the catalyst process. Now the growth of thin film can be categorized into three categories. This could be solid based, liquid based and gas based. So in today's presentation, will be discussing about the gas phase deposition only. But in solid phase, we have the particle deposition technique. In liquid phase, we have spray pyrolysis, dip coating, spin coating, EPT, Langer-Blodgett coating, 
and hydrothermal technique. Whereas in gas, we have chemical as well as physical deposition technique. And in chemical deposition technique, we have vapor phase deposition technique, atomic layer deposition technique, chemical vapor uh, uh, deposition technique. And in physical technique, we have sputtering, evaporation, and molecular beam epitaxial growth. So now, to start with, we'll be discussing about the gas. And the gas phase technique is we are focusing on physical. And in physical, we have two categories, sputtering and evaporation. Now, in evaporation technique, we have three categories. First is pulse laser deposition technique, e-beam deposition technique and filament evaporation technique. So we'll be discussing about all these techniques in today's lecture. Now in pulse laser deposition technique. So if you see this schematic, the laser is used as the name suggests pulse laser. So we use a pulse laser, let us say a laser called NDAG laser, which is having the wavelength of 266 nanometer. This wavelength is very crucial for deposition of thin films. So this laser is made to fall on a chamber. A chamber is an enclosure where we ha have the target material and the substrate or the platform over which the thin film has to be coated. So in target, we place this target material on the uh, target crossel and this target crossel is kept parallel to your substrate holder or a platform holder. So in my presentation, I'll be using the word substrate again and again. And this substrate is a material like glass substrate, silicon substrate, sapphire substrate. And this substrate is taken as a platform over which the thin film is being coated. So now the glass substrate is kept parallel to your target. So when this laser falls on the target, it provides so much of energy to the material target material that the atoms or the molecules present in the target, they start to eject out because of the high energy. So when these material uh, atoms and molecules come out and they form a small plasma, which is called a plume. So if you see this photograph, this shows a color of blue plume. So it is the pl plume of zinc oxide material. So we are depositing here zinc oxide in this chamber. Now, this chamber is evacuated first to a vacuum of order 10 raised to power minus 6 torr so that the impurities cannot come in our thin film making. So now, then this laser is made to fall on this target and the target atoms and molecules eject out in the form of a plume and this plume gets deposited on the substrate. So this is how the PLD works. So first, the important step in PLD is the laser ablation of target. That means a laser of high energy is falling onto the target. Then the dynamics of plasma, that means the properties of this plasma or the plume could be controlled by various parameters like the energy of laser, incident laser, wavelength of incident laser, and also the pulses in which the laser is falling on the material and also the ambient gas. Sometimes we need to use some ambient gas like oxygen if we are making some oxide film to compensate the oxygen vacancies. Then this deposition of the ablation material on the substrate. So there has to be an appropriate target to substrate distance. If this distance is very small, then the stress could be generated in the film. And if distance is very far, then there could be possibility that no film is being deposited. So all these parameters are very cru uh, cru uh, critical. So then the nucleation and the growth of thin film on the substrate takes place. That means initially some atoms or molecule resides on the sub uh, surface of your um, uh, substrate. Then these acts as the nucleation sites for the further atoms or molecules coming on and falling on the substrate. Then the factors influencing on the thin film growth, as I said, is laser parameters which depends upon the quality of your laser and the type of laser that you are using. Then the substrate temperature is very uh, critical. Like sometimes we need to give the temperature to the substrate so that due to the thermal agitation, a smooth film could be grown or the desired crystallinity could be attained. Then 
the substrate surface if the substrate surface is very rough your film could be having a very high stress or could be rough or have some cracks then the background pressure definitely we are giving some if we are giving some gas like oxygen or argon in the chamber so the pressure of the background is very important so if the uh, gas molecules are very dense inside the chamber then there could be stress in the film and if they are very less in the chamber then there is a possibility that the deficiencies in the film could be generated then there are certain advantages and disadvantages of your pld system so first let us see the advantages so the complex materials with the desired compositions can be ablated so we can use any type of complex materials like bf o bto these are just examples so which could be easily deposited using pulse laser deposition technique it is fast and easiest to study new chemicals since in pld we only work in very small area so to create target of very small area is easy in case of this pld system then the it has the compatibility with oxygen and other reactive gases but there are certain disadvantages of the system this advantage is that it has small area processing that means only on the very small area of substrate we can fabricate our thin film and due to which this cannot be used for the mass production or the device level production then it has lack of uniform uniformity so generally in pld system we get the uniformity in the area of 1 cm by 1 cm square which is not sufficient enough for higher device fabrication level and also laser requires very huge maintenance cost next is the electron beam evaporation technique so it is a physical form of vapor deposition technique in which the target anode is bombarded with an electron beam now if you see this schematic there is a chamber again which is evacuated to the vacuum level of 10 raised to power minus 6 so every system that is being used physical deposition technique has to be evacuated first so that the external impurities may not disturb our thin film fabrication now here in this we keep a crucible or a board and in this board we place our target material this board is made up of a metal which is having very high melting point like tungsten molybdenum and graphite now we keep our material in this and we allow an electron beam to come and fall on this material so when this electron beam which is coming out from the heating of a tungsten filament and is made to focus on this crucible using the magnets so when we make this electron beam to fall on this material target material kept in the crucible it melts the material so once the material is melted its evaporation temperature is reached it will start getting evaporated and the it gets evaporated in the 3d conical shape and then gets deposited on the substrate or the platform again so now the magnetic field and the rastering are used to electron beam into the metal source so once this electron beam is ejected out from the tungsten source it has to be continuously rasted on the target so that it should not fall on a one particular area which may destroy your crucible or board now there are certain advantages and disadvantages so advantage is that all the high temperature materials can be evaporated like platinum gold it is good for lift off technique so if you see the photolithography technique which is used for device fabrication it is the best technique for the metallization of thin film for making electrical contacts and it has best highest impu uh, highest purity so the films fabricated using e beam are impu uh, impurity free and are of pure uh, thin films then the major disadvantage is that it has dielectric material evaporation is very difficult so those material which are dielectric in nature they have very high melting point and cannot be evaporated using e beam and it has poor step coverage and some cmos processes are uh, sensitive to the radiation so the e beam radiation that is coming out they may it may destroy the other features of your cmos devices now next technique is the filament evaporation technique so this method is used 
high temperature to melt or sublimate the target or the source material. This is similar what we do in e-beam evaporation. But the major difference comes that in that we were melting our material using the e-beam, but here we are melting our target material using the joule heating. So what we do in this schematic, you can see there is a boat or a crucible made up of material, uh, metal, and when we connect this metal to some electrodes and supply power to these electrodes, then because of the joule heating, this metal board gets heated up. So whatever material, target material is kept inside this crucible or the board, it will get melted and after certain point, certain point when its melting point has been uh, attained, it boiling point has been attained, it will start evaporating and gets deposited on the surface of your substrate. So again, this chamber has to be evacuated to vacuum 10 raised to power minus 6 stop. Now, these are certain shapes of crucible that is used in thermal evaporation or the filament, evap uh, filament evaporation. So, these could be of various uh, designs and but depending upon the material type, these designs are selected. Now, the limitation of this system is that it is limited to low melting point materials like platinum cannot be deposited using this technique. Filament limits the amount of material that can be deposited. Like if we want to make a very thick metal film, we cannot deposit using this technique because the metal kept inside the board is limited. And the third one, density and adhesion is poor. Since the deposition is taking very fast, so that sometimes the adhesion and the uh, density of the thin film could be poor. The next technique is the sputtering technique. It is the mostly used worldwide technique for the device fabrication. Now we'll come to know why. Because sputtering is a physical phenomena where atoms in a solid target materials are ejected into gas phase and due to bombardment of the material surface by energized atoms. Now the basic principle of the system is the momentum exchange between the are atoms and the ions. So let us consider this schematic is a chamber and in this chamber what we do we keep our target on the one electrode and our substrate on the another electrode. So what we do we apply some RF power between target and substrate. Now target is given the negative power and the substrate is given the positive power. So, target will now act as cathode and substrate will act as anode. So, now what we do in this sputtering system, we inject certain gas which could be either reactive or non-reactive. So, under the non-reactive category, your argon gas comes. But under the category of reactive gas, oxygen and nitrogen comes. So, Depending upon the target and the type of material we are depositing, the reactive gas and non-reactive gas composition could be taken. So, let us suppose we have to fabricate a thin film of platinum here. So, what I will do, I will take a target of platinum, thick platinum and I will insert argon which is a non-reactive gas inside this chamber. So, now once the RF, RF power is supplied between target and substrate. So, there is an electric field created between these two electrodes. So, the electric field which is created between these two electrodes will start ionizing the gas present in between the target and the substrate. So, this gas because of this electric field gets ionized. So, once it is ionized, the argon ions argon atoms will eject out one electron and it will become as argon ion. So, this electron which has come out from the argon orbit, it will have very high energy. So, what it will do? It will bombard with another argon atom and again ionize it and again argon ion and a new electron is created. Then that electron 
will again bombard with another and uh, argon ion so there is a cascade and this cascade can be seen in the form of a plasma and the plasma is the gas which is having both a equal number of positive argon ions and equal number of electrons so now the argon ions which are positive in nature they will get attracted towards this target or cathode which is negatively biased so they will transfer their energy and they will first bombard with the target very with very high energy and they will transfer their energy to the target material and that target material will eject out and gets deposited on the substrate similarly the electrons will be uh, are negative in nature so they will try to make a sheet layer above the substrate so why the rf is used here because in rf what we do we supply certain change of bias so now this negative bias is positive and this positive bias is non negative so because of the repulsion these argon atoms which were sitting on the target they will come out and the electron sitting on the substrate they will again repel out and they will participate in the plasma activity then again the sudden switch the negative cathode target is connected and then the positive substrate is connected so likewise this cascade is being formed and the plasma is responsible for the deposition of your thin film over the substrate now here there are again certain parameters like the deposition time your deposition gas composition the amount of rf power which we are applying and the base pressure that is being used all these features or the parameters uh, decides your film quality or the property now why sputtering because sputtering provides large area targets so target area if the target area is let us suppose of 6 inch we can deposit film of uniform area of 4 inch whereas in pld we had the restriction of only 1 cm likewise in commercial industrial areas what they do they take this sputtering target of about 12 inch 24 inch to get the maximum area of deposition and the mass production could be supported then the thickness in this sputtering technique can be easily controlled by the deposition time and other parameters it has good control over film prop, uh, properties such as step coverage grain size etc and surface can be sputtered or clean in the vacuum so using the rf supply only before the deposition we can clean our substrate also in the sputtering system and it is highly reproducible so whatever film you are making today if you use the same parameter same system the film can be fabricated with the same results after 10 days or 15 days or 10 years also then it is suitable for bulk production as i said now the sputtering can be divided into two categories dc sputtering or the rf sputtering in dc sputtering what we need to do we need to provide dc in pulse form and continuously switch positive negative cycles whereas this could be easily done in rf because rf always has a positive negative cycle and then comes the magnetron sputtering to uh, confine the plasma near the target surface what we can do we can place certain magnets on the target holder so this is the live image of a target holder where you can see this is the diode uh, target holder where there is no magnets and this is the magnetron where you can see the gray lines these are just the magnets and these magnets uh, could control the properties and increase the deposition rate so the in come uh, in less time we can get very good quality thin films so thank you so much